Good afternoon, gang. Hope you're good. Hope you can hear me. All the usual paranoia I have over signal, etc. But it seems to be fairly stable so far. And you'll be pleased to hear I've got some esteemed guests joining me. So you're not going to have to tolerate me and my glitchy signal for half an hour. Thanks to those that persisted last week. Had some lovely feedback uh, on various episodes from last week, especially on Friday. We had all everyone's enjoying his finance Fridays. Frantically making notes, giving me screenshots of said notes. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do um, is to announce the, uh, a few different changes we've got for this year, chewing it over, and uh, our, my guest will help me to explain those a little more. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to promote this year is our Physio Matters First Step. I've seen Farouk a couple of weeks talking a little bit about, well, just before Christmas, wasn't it, about reflections on it as well as what they've got planned. Um, they've been doing some brilliant work with some new graduates and so I've got two members of the team joining me again today and we've got some little co-projects and co-work that we're going to do as well. Uh, it's already telling me that we're having some issues so I hope you're still hearing me okay. Please let me know if it's glitchy etc there's a few dials left but otherwise um, if you can just put in the chat comment as to whether or not you're getting it loud and clear. Of course participate as we go along. When we've got guests on you guys are always dead Quiet and then five minutes. You then with loads of questions that we can then uh, not, not cool straight out of the gate. Question to you before we get our guests on: Is your current experience with students are you one, or is it uh, you know are you placement uh, student at the moment? If you're an established clinician that uh, in the NHS, privately independent sectors, um, your interactions with students and graduates at the moment. Kate is then like. I mean, that it's, it keeps glitching, so I'll try and sort that out in a second. Hopefully, Reese and Amelia guest today, they'll be a bit better than mine, and I can sort stuff out. But hopefully, it should tidy itself up. And without further ado, Amelia, Reese, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Sorry about the connection issues if that occurs. I've warned you both that if it goes off air, then you're going to have to hold court. It'll be a baptism of fire. You'll have to just lead the line on it, okay? But we're here. First off, I think it'd be smart for us to just have you both introduce yourself if those for those that don't know you. Uh, Amelia, would you like to go first? Yep. Um, I'm Amelia Bell-Bentley. I'm a final year physiotherapy student at Salford University, and I'm a member of the Physio Matters team and the Physio Matters First Step team, which you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at PM First Steps. Brilliant. A little bit of promo straight out the gates. Reese. My name is Reese Perrett. I'm a second year student at Manchester Met, about to start my placement next week, and I'm part of the Physio Matters First Steps. Brilliant. No, thank you both for being here. Um, we've got a number of things we want to try and cover, and so I, I hope uh, our signals, which seem to have stabilised a little bit, behave themselves. Um, but Amelia, I'll start. I'll start with you because you've been involved um, with Physio Matters for a little while now, and also uh, just coincidentally happened to be local. So you came through a vetting process that was blinded when you you, you were announced as our um, apprentice. I think we called it at the time, didn't we? Um, it turned out you were local, so you also then came as an intern over the summer not last year, of course, but the year before at Choose Health. So we've worked with you a little while. This First Steps project really close to your current working environment, isn't it? And so you've been able to get your teeth into that. How has the landscape changed then in recent times? This, this I'm talking obviously in pandemic times. You've almost had a split. Your student time has been half and half, pretty much directly. So how has that been? Um, I think like some things haven't changed, like the, the content and the information that we're learning and the core principles of physiotherapy obviously haven't changed. And our lecturers have still been like really supportive and really communicative with us. And our like physio friends have still been like great and still supportive through like WhatsApp or whatever. We're still keeping in touch. Um, but in terms of placement, it just adds like a whole other layer of complication, like less placement avail availability and then like when you're on placement you're worried about whether you'll catch COVID and give it to the patients or whether you'll accidentally catch COVID and give it to your family or whether your placement will be interrupted whether you'll be redeployed whether the staff you know they've got other priorities on top of their normal priorities I mean you all already appreciate that staff are always really busy anyway but they're just more busy than normal they've got more yeah. concerns um but it's amazing like how 
how much they still provide in that excellent experience. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that, that's great, and I'm, I'm I'm so pleased to hear of all the stories we're getting about people. And the learning's a bit more time. online than normal, but apart from yeah. that, yeah. Okay, no fair play. That's brilliant. Now, Reese, uh, anything to add to that, mate? Because you know you're in a you're in a similar boat, but I think did you say a uh, second year student? Yeah. So my first year, we got interrupted in March, and then our, we had a we were meant to have our um, placement in the summer, which got cancelled due to COVID. Um, so we've not been out on placement yet, and we're hoping to go out on Monday. But as immediately touched on there, the availability of placements has been reduced a little bit. So some students may or may not be going out on placement next Monday as well. Everything's been online. We've had um, about once or twice a month, we've gone in for some practical work um, in our little bubbles, but that's been very limited. So, Right. Now, I'm, I'm certainly not trying to bait tears here, guys, but how stressful has it been for students in this landscape? Then? Massively stressful. Massively. I, I think it's mixed. I feel like some things are easier, but it does ask, add that additional stress but I'm equally thankful to have like physiotherapy to focus on because if I didn't have physiotherapy on my course there I'd be like spending much more time worrying about the pandemic whereas I feel like I'm doing something okay. actively to help so even though it is more stressful with all these concerns I equally right. feel like proud of myself and for everything that I do and it takes the pressure off in terms of what you can achieve you just know that turning up and trying your best you should be really grateful that you've managed to do that in such a situation so yeah yeah, that's a great point. I think it, the, the inherent uh, feeling of being able to contribute productively, uh, both to your, you know, obviously your, your, your careers as well, but also the social impact of the work that you're then doing, it, you know, the redundancy that it might feel if you weren't involved in that, uh, it might be, it might loom large. So it's a really good point. But Reese, just on that, on that then, with regards to sort of some of the stress and burden and stuff, you guys are having to juggle many things. Um, what's the... Um, What's the, the sort of sense like in terms of how different it is going to be in outcomes, really? Uh, is that something that you perceive is going to be that you're going to be the graduate that you'd expect? Or is there going to be some differences there that are going to come for the right? Um, I think it's mixed. I think it depends on how you learn as well. I'm quite a practical learner, so I've struggled a little bit. Um, but other people that I've worked with have excelled this year as well. So I, I think it's mixed. I think it comes down to what type of learner you are. Um, I must add as well, I, I must like stress because I've got a 12 month old baby as well. So I sat <laughs> in the midst of COVID and uh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, again, you're not a million miles away geographically either, Reese. So I think in normal times, we'd have been able to get as uh, toddlers together as well as have been able to have a, a drink over over our shared interests. And so that's the thing that upsets me uh, is not being able to see both of you in person uh, for a good while, at least with Amelia and Reese. We've never met in person, which upsets me. So let's uh, all, all wish for sunnier climbs uh, in the pandemic terms soon. What I want to ask on that theme, though, is. I can, I've been reflecting myself on the, let's press fast forward and start to think about some of the consequences on graduates that have then had to sort of weather this storm, to use that metaphor. And that there is this very real question over the quality of education and the logistics, et cetera, that you've been able to, be, to have in order to then, and also the adjustments in standards that have needed to be um, made. And I think that's a very fair concern for qualified members of staff and professionals to feel like, has the bar been dropped in a sensible way to account for this? Or is it something that therefore that that crop of graduates is going to be somewhat compromised? And they're not meaning it in a nasty way. Therefore, we won't employ them. They're just meaning is there going to be other things we need to other provisions in place that we're going to need to do that we wouldn't otherwise do when someone has met a graduate point. And then there's this similar overlapping problem, which is that it kind of offers some support for a group of therapists that have been constantly degrading the, every next crop of students almost. You know, it's like, oh, standards have slipped in. They've been making that noise for 10 years, right? As you know, Generically, without pointing at specifics. I, I worry that that gets overindulged. And so I think there's some legitimate concern. And then there's this overblown fear mongering about what that might mean and, and how good students are going to be coming out of, uh, of uni. I just wondered if you guys had 
given any thought to that and, and had any reflections on on what I'm describing there? Yeah, Do you want to take this, Reese? Uh, I've had a, a few thoughts. Obviously, I'm a mature student. Um, so I've had a few thoughts, a few plans of where I wanted to go. And it, it is a concern whether we're going to have the skills to move forwards as a, a graduate. But also, I think I'm at an exciting but also stressful period where we're going on to placement. And I feel like we learn so much more on placement. And there's whether that's in person, whether we're going into hospitals or whether it's virtual as well. I feel like we're at the forefront of a new age of physiotherapy where we're going to do a lot more virtual clinics. And I feel like we can really push that as students learning online. We can graduate and push that as we graduate into roles as well. Yeah, I feel like I'm concerned that maybe I won't have all the skills that other years would have had or that people will need or it might be more difficult when I go into a role but equally I think that can be you know mitigated for by like support you know such as mentoring support when when you arrive in a job or by a good like tr um what's it called CPD program or preceptorship program something like that like that could mitigate for the learning that's missed but I from the placements that I've had, I can only speak from mine, the learning experience has still been really good. Like, I can't imagine that I would have learned much more if we hadn't been in a pandemic. Yeah, I didn't get everything, like I, there were things going on and it might have compromised some aspects, but I still feel like I've gained adequate learning and the marking process was still, you know, really strict and making sure I hit those key targets. So that wasn't relaxed. So... In some ways, I feel I'm more skilled because I've had to be more independent. I've had to be more proactive. Right. So I think it. I think I would be cautious to say that. Um, to cautious to say that would be less skilled, or you know, those people that uh, might be a bit worried about um, this band, this group of physios coming to practice. I'll be cautious. Yeah, I think it would be it would be unfair and unfair and painting with too broad a brush, wouldn't it, to sort of infer that across the board. However, we just need to make sure that then there is a clarity as to why those things have been uh, mitigated. Because as I said, there's almost a there's a credible. You can imagine that, uh, and I know it's it's my job to pay attention to these sort of broad trends. But imagine I was just speaking as a clinician rather than being involved in sort of the social commentary side side of the industry that I am. I would I would hold that thought and, and wonder you know and just not be close enough to know whether those things have been mitigated sensibly and so we've just got to make sure that whilst we don't dismiss anyone that's got any legitimate concerns in that direction but then also don't allow people to then infer that oh we've just got we've just got people almost fresh out of the GCSEs they don't have a clue we're going to need to provide provisions and, and they'll because I think that that will patronize and also um, not give you guys the opportunities to kick on, especially those, and this is my bias with working with you guys, is especially those like you that have been bolstering their learning through social interactions, using educational materials, and even producing other educational materials for your peers, right? You're, you're right in at the sharp end of it. If you get painted with that broad brush, uh, then, then it's going to be of a massive loss to the industry who should be accelerating your progress and your careers. So I think that's no lovely answers, guys. Really appreciate that. It's also one of the reasons why one of the things that we've come to realize, and I mentioned this last week to, to regular listeners, is that uh, on chewing it over, purely as a means of me needing to make sure I scarf her off a bit quickly on Tuesdays for childcare, I was then thinking, right, it'd be smart for me. Um, one of my favorite things to do is hand the microphone over to platform the, uh, the other voices that are important in this space. And therefore, we were going to have the guest hosts. And first steps were top of that list, right? I wonder if the first steps team could host chewing it over once a month on a Tuesday, first month, first Tuesday of the month we've gone for, and that's going to be what we're going to do from here. So as of next week, so next Tuesday will be the first takeover episode, uh, whereby first steps will be talking about these sorts of things, not just for students and new graduates, but also giving insight uh, from the uh, for, to therapists and hopefully offering some of those reassurances that I was talking about, really. So that's the big announcement. Next Tuesday is your first show. What have you got in store for us, Amelia? Well, really excited to be giving our first show. It's going to be a great focal point for the work that we're doing. We can summarise the things that we're do doing, but also we can bring like a real student voice as well. So, you know, you might be thinking, oh, what? 
how are these students feeling? Like what's going on with the students at the, the moment? You know, we, we can be that voice for you. We can keep you up to date and we're hoping we can have little guests on, you know, people that are relevant to us, other students that might be on placement at the moment, clinical educators get the inside scoop on like what clinical educators are thinking. Cause as a student on placement, that's what you always want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and yeah, lecturers and things like that. But also, we love organised fun, so maybe some quizzes. <laughs> Brilliant! Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. sounds good as well. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Reese, important to try and make sure we don't we, we make sure we bridge the any divides that could occur between students, their educators, as well as the like you mentioned, in clinical educators and their future their future colleagues, of course. Um, so, what, what sort of stuff do you feel that this as, as well as the other first steps project uh, materials can do to try and imp enhance that conversation. So I think we need to really get, a, a, as Amelia touched on, a, a student voice to say to show that we're not being, you know, held back with our teaching, and to show that we are learning and we are progressing, and we've got ideas that can progress, even you know, as we graduate before we graduate, we've got ideas that we can push forward to enhance physiotherapy as students as well. Yeah, no, that's 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 definitely something that we've seen emerging from your other work in first steps, really, is that ability for you guys to, to because you're paying attention to it closely, you're able to bring things that, that others wouldn't think about. And because we've got you know all the plates that we're all spinning in practice at the moment, and also it's, it's remiss. I saw some people concerned... Uh, again, it's social media, so this is not a representative sample at all, but people expressing concerns about, well, I would take some students, but I'd be concerned about their, their compliance with policy, etc. And I was just like, that's just really clumsy, because if anything, you guys will be right up there with wanting to make sure that you're compliant. It's not as if you're going to sort of am amble into practice maskless, touching everything, are you? It's like... I imagine you guys have been having to be really strict with yourselves and, and, and your general policies internally on that sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, for my placement potentially starting next Monday, we don't know yet, but this morning I had to go and take a COVID test, got another one booked for later in the week just to keep on top of it, make sure that right. I'm negative going into hospitals if I do. So we are doing things. We're not just, you know, we're not just typical sort of the typical student um what people think of a typical student going out drinking all the time not really having much responsibilities i think that needs to be sort of wiped away a little bit and the fact that we are responsible you know we are going and living through this as ourselves so i think we are going to be taking things forward quite a lot mm. is it do you reckon that caricature still looms large amelia um, I, f I feel like that is often the perception, especially I'm also a mature student as well. And people think that now I've gone back to university, I'm going to be out, you know, drinking, going on nights out. But actually, the physio course is really intensive. And I know even some of like the younger students, I'm, I'm like astonished by how mature they are for that age. Like I, when I was that age, like, and the things they're having to deal with, like, and the seriousness of the situation when they were in hospital, like, it, it is like some of them are working on COVID wars and things like that. To, so, so to think that they wouldn't be able to realise the seriousness of the situation, especially if you took the time to sit down with them and talk about, you know, what the policies are and why they're important. I can't think of any like physio student that I know that wouldn't take that on board and be sensible with that because you feel, you imagine the guilt of feeling like that you've in, infected, a you know, a patient on placement and they've died because because of you so you, you don't you know you are taking it seriously and you are like mm. having to be more careful in your life outside of placement Absolutely. i'm sorry to get all you know a bit heavy no, um. no, 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 you're, right. you're right no it's it's definitely worth emphasizing isn't it that you guys are having to be um are being appropriately thoughtful in that direction as well as this being you, you are budding healthcare professionals in a pandemic and therefore aren't um, and also, it does help that the pubs are bloody closed, doesn't it? Like, yeah, like, exactly. Closed, I was going to yeah. say, but, but they're closed anyway, so it's not really an option, <laughs> is it? Yeah, but this is the thing. I don't want to suddenly come across as a hypocrite. I can just imagine someone sort of shouting at the shouting at their screens at the moment that might have known me as a student, right? So they, they, there is you two as well as your team and as well as the general, you know, 
uh, Joe Blog student at the moment, especially in physio, certainly more sensible than I was. But it is a different time now. I'm not excusing in every aspect of my behaviour back then, don't get me wrong. However, it's something that in, in these times it takes for an appropriate level of professional seriousness um, and, and that goes in and out of place. But, you know, it used to be certainly you had different levels and I'll admit this myself is that certainly um, professionalism is something that wasn't a word anywhere near me, particularly outside of placement. Now on placement, of course, I appropriately stepped up. Now it is relevant that those lines are, that those things are closer together because of the way in which you need to keep yourself safe and sound, but also be an appropriate representative of a healthcare community to not then be really cavalier with your own safety, your bubbles, etc., and coming into close contact with people as a means of role modeling, but also, like Reese is saying, to make sure you don't compromise your own learning as well as the uh, the potential that you could then put other people at risk. So no, it was well worth well worth emphasising, and and I and I can reiterate what you've said about the maturity that we're continuing to see of this next crop of students coming through. And if anything, the fact that you've had to be really thoughtful about that stuff, I think, is only going to mean that things that would have otherwise been dry before, such as governance and safety related <laughs> policy stuff, it's like you're sharper on that than than ever. Uh, we've had a comment already come in here from, from Jane Ashbrook, who's been on the show before and also obviously contributed to various different pieces of content we've done for students. She said it'd be great to have some discussions with clinical educators about how everyone's about everyone's concerns on placement. These are really pertinent points about uh, uh, that are concerning our students and educators, especially students who haven't yet been out. Um, now, I can't believe it's in the comment now. Where are we on? Uh, you haven't had students on placement during the pandemic yet. Jane, this is the problem. You put such a bloody lengthy comment on. I can't read it. Where are we on? <laughs> sorry for the long-winded comment. Brilliant. It does actually say that. It says, sorry for the long-winded comment. Yes, Jane, you should maybe have done it in two and I'd have been able to put it all on screen. Thanks, though. And that's a really good point. Do you think that that's, um, that's going to be, you're going to have guests on and stuff uh, to talk, talk through those issues and, and get stuck into them? Because sometimes they're kind of, don't it, that stuff just doesn't get said enough i would say yeah I think amelia touched on it before we are looking to get guests on so like clinical educators other students maybe even lecturers as well and jane's one of my lecturers at mmu so it'd be great to have her on so yeah yeah i think the csp students have also done um a video a q a video similar but we definitely yeah that's something that's a great idea i've already written it down in my notepad don't worry jane <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've got a reese fan in here teresa said yeah good to see you reese nice one is that you, is your mum teresa <laughs> <laughs> no i uh, think it's someone from the course right, brilliant. No, that's great um so what i want to ask um <laughs> as well guys is with regards to some of the um we all know that one of the enhancements to a student experience is the non-clinical and, 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 and a massive part of it. Now, Amelia's touched on the fact that compared to someone who's got eight contact hours a week, typically on an Econ 101 degree or what have you, then it's a different environment as a student. It was when I was there. But we all know that those things are important features and it'd be remiss if we didn't touch on them. How much are you guys missing that and the student experience that, that comes with that? Go to you first, Reese. For me, um, as as my you know educators will know, I like to ask a lot of questions, as you probably know as well, Jack. And yeah. so, the ability to be in person and be able to just approach the the staff, the lecturers, and ask questions—that's really something that I miss. Uh, having that interaction, that back-to-back -back interaction, you can have it on sort of Teams and video calls, but just it doesn't feel right. Doesn't seem the same that you can have so that's one of the things i struggle with is that having that dialogue back to back with like with the lecturers but also with our fellow students normally we'd be studying in groups you know around a table having a chat having you know a couple of something to eat and that's something that we haven't been able to have as well it's all been i've been revising on teams the last couple of weeks for an exam and it's very wooden if that makes sense sure yeah, I can understand that. Now, as is as is the you know studiousness of the first steps team. I asked a question about non extracurricular, non clinical stuff, non physio stuff, and he gave me a physio answer. Fair play, Reese. It was a good answer, but that's not necessarily <laughs> what I meant. Amelia, you have a try. What about the other non physio stuff? 
Um, um, do you mean like about first steps sort of stuff? No, I don't. <laughs> Honestly, please. <laughs> I thought that, that right. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? Sorry, sorry. reword this question. I'm getting lost in the question exactly. here. If you've, both, if you've both misunderstood, it's the question that's at fault, then definitely right. And this might blow your minds, right? Being a student goes beyond being a physio student, right? So okay. there are other things students do, drinking or otherwise, that I'm saying have been compromised by the pandemic. I'm trying to say. <laughs> Is there, is there anything, <laughs> Amelia? I know you, Amelia. Net, but I, I mean, I, do you need me to get, spell too many examples? Or we? Getting I, I'm that? getting the picture. Net, netball. Is that the sort of thing? It can be. I well, I normally play netball every Monday. Like I love playing netball. Like when I was studying, doing that was, you know, it sort of kept me grounded and like gave me something to focus on and just enjoyment. Just thinking about is the ball going to hit my face? Like I couldn't. <laughs> doze off at any point or think about anything else because the ball would hit my face but I can't do that at the moment and I've just like completely forgotten about it blocked it out my life a bit but then the other day I saw that netball was like being screamed streamed on YouTube and I just watched it and I remembered like the joy that I felt playing netball like I can't wait to get back it's going to be amazing but I've started painting or I've just changed up my hobbies a bit um is what I've done but yeah it helps living in a shared house with people for me because i've got like people around to hang out with um yeah i can imagine that's that's one of the things at least it's not come with it some social isolation from housemates etc reese um now that now that i've managed to spell my question out a bit better yeah so i'm sort of i'm outside of the the typical uni experience with being a, a dad for the last 12 months but I've missed going to like the gym. I owned a gym up until the summer and closed that down due to the pandemic. So I, I missed that interaction with other my friends that I go to gym with. You know, I was working, doing some hours with a football club that's semi-professional and that's closed down as well. So that whole interaction has gone as well. So it's, there's all kinds of things that it's affected away from. The, the physiotherapy side. Mm, no, that's great. Well, I'll tell you what, this has been a fantastic show, but also a great lesson in, you know, the questions that you guys are going to ask are going to be far clearer uh, than the ones that I'm asking. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So please, for those that are tuning in both live and afterwards now, make sure you tune in to the First Steps Takeover first Tuesday of every month on chewing it over as well as them paying attention to the physio matters first steps as a project we're going to be platforming them at therapy live events as well as then all sorts of different co projects we're going to be doing make sure you plug those uh, social media handles again Amelia and give me just a few last words if you would um yep so you can follow us on at pm first steps on twitter and instagram one of the cool events that we've got coming up is a virtual coffee morning for students and new grads that's on the 6th of feb one till three that's just like a general chat so we're hoping like physio students and new grads from all over the uk or you know can come and we can just chat about the different things that we're facing but we're really excited for our first takeover next week and um, so stay tuned for that and yeah we've got a newsletter coming out you know it's it's all going on we want loads of people to get involved with us we want it to create we want to create a learning community and um, a supportive learning community where all physio students and new grads can feel like they can ask those difficult questions mm, brilliant and rest assured that when things do start to get back to normal in peacetime um, and we will definitely be able to find opportunities to get you guys all together um, at various different university sites across the country so that this isn't going to be virtual forever. This is the this is a way in which we can bridge those gaps and be able to really kick start that once you guys can get interacting again in person. Reese, a few final thoughts from you as well as make sure you plug the, your own personal social media handles as well, guys. Yeah, so I think it's really stressful times for a lot of students right now. But one thing I will say is keep plugging through and we will get through the other side and we will have a lot more experiences to be able to draw upon. So stick with it. And if anybody needs anybody to chat to, our DMs are always open as well. Brilliant. No, that's really good. I noticed a comment come in here from Thriller72 on YouTube. Where do we find that? I assume the best way is to, I don't know if this, this question might have been answered by Amelia's answer. 
following those accounts on social media is where you'll get all those updates, as well as the fact that, and I suppose that's another, I can't remember if this is, I don't think it's an exclusive announcement, but certainly we're going to be helping Physio Matters First Steps as a project to have a, a better digital footprint and infrastructure, including a website soon. And so it's going to be more and more obvious, but in the meantime, follow Physio Matters First Steps on Instagram and on Twitter, and that should get you where you need to be, especially for the coffee morning and all sorts of other exciting features you guys have got planned. Thanks so much for today. Really appreciate it. And good luck next week. Thank you. <laughs> You're not going to make a mess here. I'm worried now. No, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll baptism, see. Of, see baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. That's the word I was looking for. No, we'll go with baptism of fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, then.